How many of you lifelong Republicans are absolutely sick and tired of Republicans? For years, they have tried to virtue signal and ride this high moral authority that they are the party of integrity, that they are the ones that will do right, do honest, and that they represent our traditional conservative, patriotic, and Christian values. And in the end, it's all bullhock. They are simply the other side of the same coin that the Democrats are. They are a ruling class elite group of snobs who don't care about this country. They care about themselves and how they can use politics as a grift to better themselves and provide their families with privilege and screw you and anyone that lives around you that doesn't fall in line and do exactly like you're told. Where are the Republicans? really defending Donald Trump. And you're hearing a little lip service out of the talking heads over at Fopa News, formerly known as Fox News, because, you know, they know that some conservatives want to hear that. But they're not really all in because they want Ron DeSantis to win. The only one that came out and forcefully defended Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy. That's it. Well, you know, a little bit from DeSantis and this one and that one. Because in the end, you know, they got to at least say, hey, they're going after Republicans. We can't have this. But in reality, there's a bunch of wink winks going on behind closed doors. And I promise you, I promise you that the Democrats and the puppet masters who pull everybody's strings in Washington, they've all given winks to all of the other Republican candidates saying, look, 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 this is not something we're going to ever do again. We just, we all agree, we got to get rid of Orange Man. And it takes commentators on the left to really break this down. Uh, let's get her. the truth. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. This is the Afternoon Drive. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're a subscriber to the channel. If not, you can do so by simply clicking subscribe and then click the word all so that you get notification of all of my rants and raves and um, reasonings. Please like and share this video so we can get the word out. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm just going to tell you right now, I don't have a long commentary on this, but this is a long program today, but it's not me. Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald. Neither one of those guys are actually Trump-loving supporters, but they do love truth. And they have come out and they have broken down the latest indictments and why there's no there there. This isn't based on law. In fact, Glenn Greenwald really breaks the indictment down. He said the, 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 the prosecutor even acknowledges that everything that Trump did, he constitutionally had the right to do, but he shouldn't have done it. And you got feckless, traitorous, treacherous, lying through his teeth, fake Christian Mike Pence saying that based on this indictment that at the time he said Trump was no longer qualified to ever be president again, he hadn't even read the indictment. Hey, Mr. Pence, did you know there's a verse in the Bible that actually says a fool answers a matter before he's heard it? I guess that makes you a fool according to the Word of God. You claim to be a lover and respecter of the Word of God. Good. Love it and then leave us alone. Go away, you fraud. The Jimmy Dore really gets into this. Jimmy Dore was one of the few voices in all of conservative, or I'm sorry, alternative media that was initially all over the whole Trump-Russia collusion thing didn't make any sense. He was one of the first ones to be all over publicly what was wrong, the criminality of Anthony Fauci and what was going on there. 
So now Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald, they break this down and they've done an outstanding job. And all I can say to it is amen and amen. And here they are. So Trump got indicted. And this is the headline in the Washington Post. Trump lies fuel January 6th riot, special counsel says. So this is what they're going to try. <laughs> they're literally going to try and say that his words. Would stand down. <laughs> this is just it's is it every it seems like every indictment gets re more ridiculous but not i'm not saying that they won't find him guilty because it's going to be a, a jury full of democrats sure, you got the right judge get the right judge you get the right jury which they will they can find trump guilty of stuff michael tracy says special counsel reveals itself to be an msnbc monologue with prosecutorial powers finally Glenn Greenwald says the same thing. He says the newest indictment reads exactly like a jointly written monologue by Joe Scarborough, Chris Hayes, Lawrence O'Donnell, and Jen Psaki. It's like Jack Smith randomly borrowed from the MSNBC scripts from over the past two years and just mixed it like a resistance ad lib. <laughs> so what they're saying is they're trying to blame Trump for inciting the January 6th uh, protest. They they call it an insurrection. They, they almost were, took over, and then we wouldn't have they gotten almost, it back. <laughs> they, they almost took over the government, Kurt. Except they forgot to bring guns. Yeah, uh, isn't that weird? They were taking over the government. They just forgot to. So those are people who went to a protest, and then the FBI, hundreds of of uh, feds were in yeah. the. So there was local cops embedded. There were hundreds of feds. There were all kind. There was secret service embedded. There were all kinds of people standing embedded. helplessly by. <laughs> and they were and they incited this uh, people to go into the to the Capitol so they can make the Trump and his political movement criminal so they don't have to run against him. That's what's happening. Hey, yeah, yeah. Let, let him pass. It'll take two minutes. They don't pick it up. OK, it, it's, it's OK. Yeah. OK, so here's let me just so. It, it's it's it, every case they bring is thinner than the first. And here we go. Here's what Glenn Greenwald says about it. Donald Trump will be convicted on one of these or more of these charges, and there's no guarantee this is the last one coming. As I said, liberals were really hoping for this sweeping indictment that accused Trump of being guilty of treason, basically, of being part of an insurrection, of inciting an insurrection. And it doesn't do that. It doesn't allege that he incited violence at the Capitol. It doesn't charge him with crimes pertaining to violence at the Capitol. Instead, it essentially says that the claims he made repeatedly, both in public and in the courts, that the election results were the byproduct of fraud in the election were false, that he knew them to be false, and that by conspiring with his lawyers like Rudy Giuliani and others, it names six, or it refers to six co-conspirators without naming them, although it seems clear we know who some of them are based on who meets the description, that it was a conspiracy to unlawfully obstruct the January 6th proceeding as well as the 2020 vote. Now, how that is a crime is a very difficult question to answer. And why is that a very difficult question to answer? Because they say in the indictment, everything Trump did was, of course, protected under First Amendment free speech. You can say false things. It's not a crime. Uh, so, but here, here's the problem. Here's again, none of these cases have any legal or uh, merit at all, and we've debunked every one of them. The first one, even CNN laughed at. The first one by that the DA Bragg in yeah. in New York. Yeah. Now the second one is in Florida. They're saying he took classified documents. Trump was the head of the government, could have declassified any document he ever wanted at any moment. It's another garbage charge. If he couldn't, then that should scare you. Yes. If there's if someone the else who's supposed to it. if there's someone else who's supposed to classify and unclassify documents higher than the president, that should scare you. By the way, there is. <laughs> <laughs> that the way there is. And that means we don't have civilian control of our government. But here here's the problem. Here we go. 
So let me go show you the key paragraphs of what I think are the key paragraphs of the indictment based on my preliminary read of it. So he's charged with four different counts. So you see it on the screen. Let's put the caption back on the screen. Count one is conspiracy to defraud the United States. Count two is conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Count three is obstruction of and attempts to obstruct an official proceeding. And count four is a conspiracy against voting rights, meaning an attempt to deny the voting rights of other people by falsely claiming the election was fraudulent. Now, we covered on this show before, and it is very relevant to note that there have been a thousand people, a thousand people criminally charged in connection with the January 6th riot. The vast majority of them are nonviolent, by which I do not mean that I believe they didn't engage in violence. What I mean by that is they're not alleged to have engaged in violence. They're alleged to have entered the Capitol, to have believed that the election was the byproduct of fraud. And yet many of them have been charged with felonies, felonies for nonviolent political protest. And there has always been a question, how is it that people who American citizens who are involved in nonviolent political protest We've watched violent protests break out all throughout 2020, and members of the Democratic Party often raise money for their bail, and very few of them were actually charged with felonies or even misdemeanors unless they really harm somebody through violence. So the question is, how do you turn people who did not engage in violence or are protesting an election into criminals? And one of the ways they did that in the District of Columbia was by using... So we don't need to know that. But this is all about criminalizing a political movement. But here's, let me get to the problem problem. Of the indictment. And it is a paragraph that is intended to say, we acknowledge Trump had the right to do certain things. And we want to make clear we are not prosecuting Trump for doing the things we acknowledge he had a right to do. Quote, the defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. So they're saying he was allowed to say, I'm the real winner of the 2020 election. There was fraud in this election that changed the results, even if what he was saying was false. He has that right. They acknowledge that. They're saying free that. free speech right. So they're saying that, and then they seemingly completely could contradict this, this paragraph in their own indictment. So here it comes. He was also entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through lawful and appropriate means, such as by seeking recounts or audits of the popular vote in states or filing lawsuits, challenging ballots and procedures. This is all legal. And of course, that's what Trump did as well. Yes. And they're acknowledging he had the right to do that, even if the claims on which those challenges and lawsuits are based were false. So what's he guilty of? Indeed, in many cases, the defendant did pursue these methods of contesting the election results. His efforts to change the outcome in any state through recounts, audits, or legal challenges were uniformly unsuccessful. Okay. So the question becomes, if you acknowledge that Trump had the right to do all of those things, how is it that you're able to file four federal (laughs) felony counts against him? (laughs) Felony! In connection with his allegation that the election was the byproduct of fraud. Here's what they say in paragraph four, quote, Shortly after Election Day, the defendant also pursued unlawful means of discounting legitimate votes and subverting the election results. In- unlawful means? As far as I know, they never lay that out, what the unlawful means were, because everything he did, they just said he could do. So here we go. Doing so, the defendant perpetrated three criminal conspiracies. Quote, A1, a conspiracy to defraud the United States by using dishonesty, fraud, and deceit to impair, obstruct, and defeat the lawful federal government function by which the results of the presidential election are collected, counted, and certified by the federal government in violation of 18 U.S.C. 371. No, no, those are just a lot of words. Those are just a lot of words that are made to sound scary, but they already told you what Trump just did, and they already said it was okay. And now these are are just different words to describe the thing that Trump's okay to do. There's no... the laying out the fraud coming so here we go oh. number two a conspiracy to corrupt to corruptly obstruct and impede the january 6 congressional proceeding at which the collected results of the presidential election are counted and certified in violation of 18 usc 1512 
And three, a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted in violation of 18 U.S.C. 241. Now, if you spend your time reading this indictment as we did before the show, and again, I don't want to suggest I, commit, I conducted an in-depth scholarly study of it because we didn't have the time to do that. But if you read it just on the first and second reading, you will see that there's very little substance to what they're claiming Trump did beyond the things they claim and acknowledge and concede he has the right to do, which is challenge the election, the results of the election by claiming It was the byproduct of fraud. They use a lot of uh, accusatory words. A conspiracy to use unlawful means. They talk about the attempt to overturn the results in in Arizona and Wisconsin. They talk about the pressure put on Mike Pence to reject the electorates presented at the January 6th hearing. But... It's unclear within the scope of what they've conceded he has the right to do any of that encompass that went beyond what they acknowledge he had the legal right to do. He tried to overturn the Wisconsin and Arizona results through the lawful means of suing in court and trying to speak with people in those states to gather evidence that fraud was committed. And with regard to the attempt to convince Mike Pence to reject the electorates, he had lawyers telling him that those theories were valid that Pence had that power. He, they cite things that where Trump admitted, this seems kind of crazy, but that's hardly a proof that you know you're engaging in fraud. That seems kind of crazy, but it seems like the lawyers are right. So I don't want to sit here and vigorously defend Trump from this indictment. But what I'm telling you is that if you're going to indict the former president of the United States, the person who is currently the leading oppositional figure to the incumbent president, you need to have very solid ground for doing so. That was our claim about the ridiculous, preposterous, laughable Alvin Bragg indictment in Manhattan. And what I acknowledge is the stronger but still frivolous claim that he committed felonies by by holding classified documents that he had every right to declassify had he wanted to, given how often in Washington, every single day, you can pick up the Washington Post or the New York Times and see that people are leaking classified information without authorization because it serves their interest to do so. People in Washington are never convicted or charged with crimes for doing the sort of thing Trump did in that case or the one in Manhattan, nor is this even close to a strong indictment. And I think they're playing with huge fire by piling up these criminal indictments in a way that polls already show at least half of the voting electorate perceives to be abusive and politicized to the point that it's strengthening Trump when they do so because they don't really have very compelling evidence that he committed serious crimes of the type type that justify bringing these charges against him in the context of how politicians are usually treated. And I think we should think about what our media would be saying, what our establishment would be saying if in some other country that was a country we're taught to dislike in Russia, Iran, or Venezuela, or whomever, where they do actually have elections, if the government in place looked at polling data that showed there was an oppositional politician gaining popularity, this is what is said about Putin and Alvani, for example, and the government is instead of engaging them in debate or trying to defeat them in elections, instead putting them in prison on dubious charges. I watched that happen here in Brazil twice. In 2017, former President Lula da Silva was leading all polls. So now remember this. So remember how Lula was put in jail, Bolsonaro becomes president, they say he's the new Trump, and then they let Lula out of prison, and then he beats Bolsonaro, and Joe Biden congratulates Lula, and all, and that's what made me and I think Jackson Hinkle and someone else very skeptical, like, what's going on with Lula? That's not good when the establishment is happy that this guy who's supposed to be against the establishment, supposed to be a socialist and a lefty, is being congratulated by the king of cap of imperialism and capitalism. And now he's going to explain that to you. He's going to explain that to you why they put Lula in jail, 
why they let him out of jail and why they're putting Bolsonaro in jail right now. It's the exact same thing that the establishment is doing here in the United States. And by the way, it's the same establishment. It's the capitalist establishment. The CIA and the FBI and the military work for the same capitalists that put Lula in jail and took him out of jail. The same capitalists. Okay, so he's going to explain it to you. By significant margins at a time when the Brazilian establishment wanted to get rid of Lula and his party because they were hoping to get a center-right party in place that they've loved forever and couldn't get. And so they impeached the president from Lula's party. They then put Lula in prison. And instead of getting the center-right establishment candidate they thought they were getting, they instead got Bolsonaro. Boom. Just like with Trump. So you remember when the Clintons convinced Donald Trump to run? And then the Clintons got everybody in the media to elevate Donald Trump so that they could run against Donald Trump because they thought they could beat him. So they they even cheated Bernie Sanders in the primary to do this. So that's a kind of rigging of an election, too, if you look at it like that. So they they got the, the media to do propaganda for them, got them their handpicked candidate, suppressed Bernie Sanders, lied about him, smeared him, did character assassination. Plus, they also cheated him 100 percent. Donna Brazil even said in her book, and 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 oh, no, I lost my train of oh, thought. I was gonna say they openly said they'd rather have him than yeah, they ra- they've said they'd rather have Trump than Bernie. Uh, I lo- forgot what I was saying. And then when Bolsonaro was president, they knew that there was only one person who could defeat Bolsonaro, and they were desperate to get Bolsonaro Bolsonaro out of office, so they let Lula out of prison. Our reporting was credited oh. for that. And they did use our reporting as a pretext for it, but they would never let him out of prison had they not needed him to defeat Bolsonaro. They would have kept him in prison despite that evidence. They let him out of prison. He beat Bolsonaro by less than two points, despite all of the same things aligned against Bolsonaro, the entire media, COVID, allegations of criminality. And in less than a year of Lula winning that election, in less than six months, in fact, Courts have already declared Bolsonaro ineligible to run again for the next eight years until he's 70. So so they're doing to Trump what they already did to Bolsonaro. Now, again, I'm no fan of Bolsonaro. I'm no fan of Trump. Um, you know me, I'm a committed lefty. Uh, but what they could do, if they can do that to Trump, then they could do it to anybody. And that's why, and I've tried to explain to people that who, who are Bernie Sanders backers, who who are loving the Trump prosecutions, that they would be doing the exact same thing to Bernie Sanders that they did to Donald Trump. And not just now, but what they did to Donald Trump in 2017, 2018, 2019, all the Russia gating stuff, all that, they would have tried to delegitimize Bernie Sanders' uh, presidency and they would have done it because they would have had most of the Democratic Party going along with the Democratic establishment, the entire Republican establishment, and the entire media. People on MSNBC said they would rather vote for Trump than Bernie Sanders. So that's the point I want to make, that they would be doing the. So why is so that's why it's easy to dismiss this, just like with Alex Jones. People are like, oh, who cares? It's Alex Jones. They're kicking him off all the platforms and taking away. <laughs> and I had to make the case to the Young Turks. Well, it this is how they started. And now it, and it got even worse than I thought. It went to censoring the leading doctors and scientists in their fields, censoring them. Not just randos and idiots and people or people who are provocateurs, leading scientists from Stanford and Harvard and Yale, they were censors. And that's where that ends up. And so the same thing. So if they if you allow this to happen, they will do this to anybody who actually. So if Cornell West is able to grab, they're going to do this to him even worse, way worse. (laughs) And so. Right now, we're being, again, that, that the idea that the Democrats and Republicans are the same is true. They both want to kill Julian Assange. They both want to keep us from having health care. And they both want a warmonger around the world. And they're both against the minimum wage. They're both against, they not, either of them is going to have no plan to help anybody. And that is stabbed that, so because that's not, that government isn't here. They don't care about America. The donor class doesn't care about America. Go watch the movie Network again and watch Ned Beatty's speech. When he says there are no countries, that's an obsolete idea. There are only corporations. And the international money system, 
That's what runs the world, not countries. There are no countries. Right now, American capitalists are wrecking America's economy and bankrupting us and hollowing us out from the inside as they fund proxy wars to the tunes of trillions of dollars. Why? Because they don't care about America. They care about Raytheon and Boeing and General Dynamics and Halliburton and, uh, and Exxon and Wall Street. That's what they, they don't care what happens to the country. There is no goddamn country. And Joe Biden doesn't represent this goddamn country. He represents his donor class, which doesn't give a shit about any country. And so we are living in a worldwide criminal cabal of capitalists. And now they're just outright <clears throat> jailing and criminalizing anybody who stands up against the establishment. They see Trump. Think about Trump. Trump's a billionaire insider. who used to bribe all these politicians his whole life. Then he grabs power and they turn. He's not enough of an insider for them. <laughs> Trump's not enough of an insider for them. They have to get rid of Donald Trump. The donor class hates Donald Trump. The only person they hate more than Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> That's the only guy they hate more. So that's what we're living in right now. So you could have a Democrat who's a warmonger against the people and is going to crush workers. Or you can have a Republican who's a warmonger against the people and going to crush workers. But you can't have anybody who's going to challenge that. And if you, they do, we're going to immediately call them a racist. We're going to call them a sexist. Then we're going to call them a Russian. And then we're going to criminalize him and his movement. They already did that to Bernie Sanders. They said his movement was sexist. They were racist. And they were violent. They did that to me when I uh, opposed the Democrats over force the vote. They said I was committing violence and I was sexist <laughs> and I was right. They do all that's that's what they do. <laughs> and that's what they do to Trump. And if you watch Joe Rogan, you saw uh, Joe Rogan blow Jim Gaffigan's mind. I know. Jim Gaffigan goes, they would do all that just to keep Trump from. Being yes. <laughs> wow. Right. Like Gaffigan, what, what else could be. more? So that they don't this these are people who don't know that Russia Gate was completely made up to delegitimize Donald Trump so he couldn't be president anymore. That's why they impeached him twice. That's what this is all about and people see it and Glenn's right, half the country is not going to put up with this. And so if there if there actually comes to be a real civil war, by the way, the country is not as divided as right. the as the as the media wants you. I travel the country every week. Yeah. People don't hate each other like you think they do. But you know who never comes up? I made a joke about it. The show, Greta Thunberg has never come up in never comes conversation up. once. You would think that's the most important thing. Never, never comes once. up. The country is not, they are dividing the country. Who? The capitalist cabal. The same people who run the CIA, who the military works for. Read Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Listen to, to uh, uh, Smedley Budler. Well, the war is a racket. The same people who run the wars are running our government, and they don't care about our country. You've got to remember that. They don't care about our country, the people in charge of the government. They don't care because who's in charge of the government? The donor class. And all they care about is their corporations. They don't care what happens to this country. So they, they, don't, they don't care if, they're, if there's an actual civil war, but it helps them. Can take, because So we've said this a million times. Foreign policy is domestic policy. Whatever we do overseas, we're eventually going to do to ourselves. So we are doing it now. So what do we do when we go overseas? We go and we fund a rebel group to create uh, an insurrection. We create a civil war. And then so then we can control with our money who becomes the next president or the ruling <laughs> ruler of this country like we did in Iran. When we overthrew Mossadegh and installed a puppet, the Shah, who was there for uh, decades, like the first, like like we uh, like we do like we do in Afghanistan for twenty years, like we tried to do in Syria. So that we did that, we fomented a civil war, a horrible civil war. We funded it, and we we thought he would fall, then we would install our puppet. Oh, like we did here too, by the way. <laughs> We've been, they've been fomenting stuff the whole time. No, no, so they're doing it here in the United States. That's what the, all those Black Lives Matters that whole summer. That was to create chaos 
Yeah, that's that was the bricks, great. the pallets of protest there, bricks left out. That's right. This is January 6th instigated by a psyop by those were peaceful protesters. They were instigated by the FBI. They didn't bring guns. So now all they want you to do, all the FBI is doing is they're they're working against MAGA. So they're trying to criminalize Trump's political organization and say they're domestic terrorists. And so they're politicizing, polit they're criminalizing political speech and politics. And they don't care if there's an actual literal shooting civil war. Who's they? The donor class, which controls the FBI, the CIA, and the government. They. The 15 to 20 freaking billionaires who run this goddamn country. They don't care. If there's an actual shooting war, they don't care how many millions of people get killed in Iraq or Libya or Syria or Afghanistan or Ukraine. They don't care. This is all this is global economics. And it doesn't matter if there's an actual civil war in this country. Now, I'm, that's not hyperbole. And they're trying to foment a real civil war. Who is that? The establishment of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party through their media. I have a bit about it in the act, in my uh, COVID lies are funny special. The they report every story in a way that divides the country, no matter what it is. And Glenn Greenwald is telling you they're not going to. They're not. Re I watched some of the CNN coverage of this last night. You did. It was un freaking believable <laughs> that they were pretending that this is real. Well, Jim Gaffigan believed it. No. <laughs> Again, and that now, I'm, I'm going to do a segment on it. I love Jim Gaffigan. He's, He's one of funny. my all-time favorite comics and a good person. And I think that's why, I mean, for my judgment, if I can make that judgment, he think he's a good person. And I know him and his wife. They're very nice people. He doesn't people. know anything. That's all. But he, I could easily have been him if I didn't do this show. Because I used to watch MSNBC and CNN religiously, read the New York Times, the Washington Post. And I believed what I was being told. Right. And most people are like that. Now, since I do this show every day, I see through it. I saw it through Russiagate. I saw through the Syrian war. I saw it through COVID. I see through this. I saw it through the indictments. I see through. So that's because I'm doing this. And those people don't. They have they they're, they're busy doing other things. And so my thing isn't to judge Jim Gaffigan, but to show as an example of how this could happen there, but for the grace of God go I, because we're all propagandized and we don't know we're propagandized. They think that happens to someone else. I think it's starting and to dawn on some people, though. If you think Russiagate is real, you've been propagandized. If you think Trump worked for Russia, you've been propagandized. If you think what Trump did is criminal and, and he should be uh, uh, thrown in jail, you've been propagandized. This is exactly what the establishment is doing, is criminalizing a political movement. The actual fascists here are the people trying to put Donald Trump in jail. Again, I'm no fan of Donald Trump. But if they could do it to him, they could do it to Bernie Sanders, they could do it to Cornell West, they could do it to RFK Jr., they could do it to anybody. They could do it to you, they could do whatever they, could do they it want to, me. They could to do anybody they want, and, and, and there's and, nothing and, you could do. There is nothing you can do. You're Look what happened to those protesters on January 6th. Those people... They're 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 locking up for years in solitary confinement. They're treating them like terrorists. Nobody had a gun. <laughs> well, good thing we all got North Korea in our pocket. Yeah, for somehow. You can't. So let's watch a little bit more of this. Eight or something. Seventy six. So they already got rid of Bolsonaro using legal means, just like they got rid of Lula. This is becoming the standard tool of the establishment in Western democracies throughout the world. And that is clearly what's happening here now. One of the things I want to remind you of, because so much of this has been forgotten, is that... So he's going to tell you that this idea that... So they've, they've made people, like our friend Jim Gaffigan, they've made people think that Trump is a special kind of bad. And, that, and they have to. They have to make Trump out to be a 30-foot Hitler in order for you to vote for a demented, warmongering enemy of workers who just crushed a strike with using real fascism. In order to vote for that guy, you have to think there's some real monster you're fighting. And Trump isn't. Trump governed just like any other Republican. In, in fact, he wouldn't do the foreign war entanglements as much as they wanted him to. He did a lot of shit. He gave you your lockdowns and your, and your uh, great he gave vaccine. You, he gave you your vaccine. And he gave you your lockdowns. Your and they, social distance and masks. All of it. So, th this that's what, I'm uh, just letting you know, that's what this is. 
And Glenn's got some more interesting things he's, he's going to share with you. Let's see what this is. And the government is, instead of engaging them in debate or trying to defeat them in elections, instead putting them in prison okay, on do. dubious charges. So what he's going to tell you is that the Democrats, when Donald Trump first got elected, they tried to undermine the election. Remember, they tried to get the Electoral College people to vote against the will of their states. Do you remember that? And we've showed you the video, and I can't believe I didn't put it in this today's show, but of there's a 10-minute video, 10 minutes nonstop, of Democratic politicians, elected politicians, from Kamala Harris to Hillary Clinton to Joe Biden, all denying the election of 2016, saying it was what, rigged, it was overthrown by Russia, he's a fraudulent president. They did that nonstop for the t entire time Trump was president. But did they throw a plate with ketchup on the wall? No. Did they reach? <laughs> did they lunge for the wheel? <laughs> they lunge for the wheel. So they did. That's what the Democrats have done. And I could show you that. Video. But people don't realize this. And then he's going to tell you about how they, in 2016, tried to get the Electoral College voters to overturn their votes and go against the will of the people. And he's going to show you that. In the, he shows you the news reports from PBS. And he goes, do you see the tone no one thought that was wrong. Yeah. No one's no one thought we were dangerously going to lose our democracy. <laughs> no well, one, in fairness, that is what the electoral college is for. That's right. <laughs> they were just following right. our system. But, so but now cuz Trump that's the worst thing in the world you could ever do was to question the integrity of an American presidential election. They've been to doing that every election in my freaking lifetime almost that they lost. They did it in, with Al Gore for certain. Well, do you want to have principles or do you want to win? In 2000, right. In 2004, they did it again because there was real shenanigans. Um, and then in 2016, okay, they would never stop doing it. Al Gore still feels like it was stolen from That's him. right. To this day. And so does Hillary yeah, it Clinton. It was. And so does Hillary Clinton. <laughs> she, she, she's like, Hers well, wasn't. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> she's just the Al, most. Al Gore's was, but it was the same establishment oligarchy didn't matter if it was al gore or george bush they were going to get that war yeah they got that they got that war with bill clinton that they wanted they got bill clinton to deregulate wall street while he gutted welfare and exploded the prison population and deregulated the media at the same time uh they were going to get it and it didn't matter um so there's your Trump indictment story. It's this is really not good. Like, uh, I, again, no fan of Trump at all. This is horrible for democracy. The people who were telling you that you got to vote for them to save democracy are actual fascists. Well, actual. They're pol they're criminalizing their political opponents. That's what this is. There's no there's no two ways about it. That that's what all these indictments are about. Trying to criminalize not only MAGA, that's what George what Joe Biden's red speech was all about, criminalizing a political movement. And that's why they're going after that uh, that Farage guy in Ukraine because he was for Brexit. Oh, uh, yeah, that, so right. Brexit and Trump, same thing. It was account. the regular people voting and sticking the thumb in the eye of the establishment and they lost control. And the way they get they do that. The get back control is what they're doing to Donald Trump and MAGA. And if it was Bernie Sanders, they would be doing the exact same thing to Bernie Sanders and his followers. And that's why this is important. But of course, the morons over at TYT and MSNBC uh, contract people and all those those idiots, uh, uh, Kyle Kalinske, is going to not report this correctly. And uh, they're not going to they're not going to tell you that truth that the establishment is trying to foment a civil war so that they can have more power over you. Why does the FBI infiltrate groups and then create crimes that they could stop so they could get more power so they could have control over you? Okay, um, anything you want to say, Kurt? Well, once you get a nice, the anger that this is going to generate, hopefully something, not from me, I don't hope. <laughs> I'm sure they hope, because that'll hasten more of, you know, all that scary minority report kind of, Technology, like, oh, we're going to need brain transparency, have, UBI, then the AI is going to take your job, all kinds of angry people. So it used to be that they used to just do go after Muslims after 9-11, but now they're going after, your, they want you to hate your neighbor. Yeah. 
Well, don't worry. We'll go after the Muslims when they don't get on board with That's the right. rainbow flag thing. So you'll be in the same That's boat. That's right. We'd be in the same boat. Come see our live shows. We're going to be in Chicago, Rosemont, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, New York City, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Stamford, Toronto, Toledo, Detroit, St. Louis, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Mm -hmm.